Even though election night came and went, that does not mean that all the votes are counted. We're still waiting for results in several states, but particularly Alaska, where we're keeping a close eye on the Senate race there, where a write-in candidate who's actually the incumbent, the Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski, is leading, I think, at the moment against Republican Joe Miller and Democrat Scott McAdams. Miller, of course, a Tea Party candidate. Could be weeks until we know for sure. So in the meantime, let's talk to Matt Felling. Up all night, tracking. He's with our, uh, tracking the election. He's with our Anchorage affiliate, KTVA. He's with us on Skype. We've had a little problem with the audio. Matt, can we hear you? I can hear you, Bill, absolutely. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. So what, oh. what the, what's going on in, in Alaska? Well, it, it's been one of those amazing races up here. It's been a fantastic story to be a part of. Lisa Murkowski lost in the primary to a, to a very insurgent Joe Miller. He had a lot of energy, and he took the race seriously, where Lisa Murkowski honestly will admit that she might have been looking past. It's like one of those football games where you look past this opponent to the next one. She sort of looked past Joe Miller back on August 24th, and she paid the ultimate price. That meant that she had to unload a lot of energy, a lot of money in the last two months, to try to mount this write-in campaign. We've seen a lot of talk about how it has not been done since Strom Thurmond in 1954. Right. But at the same time, a lot of write-in dynamics are different than the incumbent with a lot of money and a large reputation. Uh, normally it's you know a fringe candidate. No, normally it's somebody with no name recognition and no money for ad buys. But Lisa Murkowski mounted it. And last night, or actually this morning in terms of on the East Coast, uh, she actually crossed a rather large threshold. She hit the 41% mark in terms of how many votes she got. She's at 41%. Joe Miller, the Tea Party Republican primary winner, is at about 35%. Now the lawyers enter the equation because just because a write-in bubble is filled, it doesn't mean that they spelled Murkowski right. It doesn't mean that all the technical aspects of putting pencil to paper, putting pen to paper, actually worked out. Well, we've heard a lot about how long it might take to count the ballots in Alaska. What about that? Uh, honestly, we are not going to start counting uh, the absentees till November 18th, and we've got a large, huge military population in Alaska. So that's going to be a significant number. And I think the big ticket that came in last night at, at 4 a.m. our time, around 7.30 your time, was a... Uh, was rural Alaska, uh, the, the, the Alaskan native villages. And uh, that's that was one of her strong points. So it wasn't a huge surprise that that got her over 41%. Now we just see how the absentee and how the, uh, how the military votes come through, uh, as, well as, uh, some of the, as well as some of the early votes that might not have been counted yesterday. She's at 41%, like I said. It is looking... Like, there is a battle to be fought. I was talking to somebody in, in Washington yesterday who said she needs at least a five-point cushion to overcome the fact that she is a write-in and all the technical aspects of, of spelling errors and whatnot, da dangling Chad's Alaska style. Uh, and we will not have a certified winner until after Thanksgiving. Sorry, Bill. So, uh, you know, weeks, in other words, for the well, count to be done. Yeah, I mean, we will we will have a good sense of where things are headed, but then, you know, the ultimate awfulness of uh, of anybody in in politics or elections, and particularly in Alaska, where they love to be uh, anti DC. You never want to lawyer up, but both the Joe Miller camp and the Lisa Murkowski camp last night admitted that they were bringing in the big guns, and uh, I don't think that it's going to be Bush Gore or Franken Coleman, but it's going to be pretty ugly by Alaska standards. Okay, here's one I have to ask you. Uh, what kind of influence in Alaska does Sarah Palin still have? Honestly, you would. we don't see that much of Sarah Palin except for what we see on the national cable networks, but she definitely brought a lot of oomph to the Joe Miller campaign. She is the number one reason that we had Joe Miller as the Republican primary winner. I mean, she definitely brought him across the finish line when she endorsed him back during the summer months. As for whether she could translate that to even more votes, uh, where it, it remains to be seen. She is, I mean, she is not 
the number one favorite daughter of the state at this point, but she still has a, a strong constituency of people who uh, are happy for her in her reality TV and her political career. Uh, she definitely is uh, to be credited with where Joe Miller stands today, because without her, uh, we wouldn't be talking about can we do a write-in, because it would have been a Lisa Murkowski, uh, Lisa Murkowski win last night. Matt Felling, KTVA in Anchorage, Alaska. Thanks very much. Good to see you.